Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this week on Semi-Serious, I want to talk about 10 things that I love about Germany. I wanted to make this video because uh, in the past, as you probably know if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, um, I've talked a lot about my culture shock experience and some of my more negative experiences with moving to Germany. So I wanted to I wanted to sort of balance it out and talk about the things that I really enjoy about being here um, because it's important. I came here for a reason and uh, that reason was mostly because Brady was here, but also because uh, Germany is awesome and um, there are a lot of opportunities here that I may or may not have had in the US. So. Yeah. Without further ado, let's get started. Number one, free tuition. As you probably know, tuition prices or university tuition in the US is so incredibly expensive. It's prohibitive for most people. Like it basically ensures that if you want to get an education, you are also signing up for a lifetime of debt. And I think that that is awful. I think that that's something that we should be working to fix and not just accepting. Like it's become so normal in the US, but in other places in the world, including Germany, it's unheard of. And so having free tuition here is amazing because it means that I, as even as an immigrant, I can go and pursue um, my education here in Germany without going into debt. It makes it so that your future is really like whatever you make it. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be wrapped up in um, paying back this money that you owe. So that's really cool. Number two. Oh, I hit my hair there. Number two, socialized healthcare. This is another thing that is very different from the US, and I know that the US is kind of just trying to figure out its healthcare system right now, uh, which is messy <laughs> to say the least. But here in Germany, it can feel like it's more expensive month to month, but there's no copay, there's no like you can go to the doctor as many times as you need to or as many times as you want and basically the whole system is in place so that people who are not well can get well and that includes everything from physical ailments to mental health to reproductive health it's socialized so everyone is paying into the pot every every month so you don't have to have an added stress or an added financial burden if the worst happens and you do fall ill and you do need medical attention and you don't have to worry about that you don't have to stress about the financial burden on you or your family and you can just get well you can just focus on getting healthy focus on getting the treatment that you need number three public transportation the public transportation system in germany and i think in europe generally is pretty awesome i don't have a car i don't i like i don't need one because I can get pretty much anywhere in the country by using public transportation, be it uh, a bus or a tram or a train. And uh, and that's really cool because um, A, it's cheaper for me, and B, it's more environmentally friendly. So that's really cool. Number four, beer. I love German beer because partially because it's delicious. It's just awesome. It's readily available pretty much anywhere and uh, <laughs> The other thing that I like about it is that you can like go and get a beer from a little corner store or a kiosk and go and walk around with it and just take it with you and like walk through the old town or walk through a marketplace or something and you have this beer. It's perfect for like summer days when it's hot outside and you get like a nice cold beer and you're walking around and exploring the culture and everything it's just like it's phenomenal highly recommend and that's something that's that doesn't really exist in the u.s you don't have like a beer you have beer gardens but not in the same way because the alcohol regulations and everything are so weirdly strict in the u.s we have like open container laws and stuff where you can't you can't take alcohol past a certain point and I understand the purpose of those, but it's cool here in Germany and it's fun to like go and grab a beer and go and, you know, walk through a park or something and sit down and like enjoy yourself. So I really like that. That's a cool thing. Number five, recycling. And this is kind of like, I feel like this is kind of a weird one for me to bring up, but um, I 
think it's really cool how environmentally conscious Germany is because uh, they're really focused on sustainability and focused on their on reducing their environmental impact. You separate everything. You separate all of your waste into your bio or your biodegradable waste, um, which is usually like food, and then paper and plastic, aluminum and glass and all of these different subcategories and stuff, which was confusing to learn at first, but I think it's a really cool system and it actually seems to work really well and I think that it does it makes you a lot more conscious about the things that you're throwing away and the way that you're disposing of them and even just that even that awareness is uh, really valuable I think number six is the architecture and history in this country because it's everywhere and the architecture is incredible it's like these beautiful half-timbered houses, especially in Bavaria, but also when I was living in Hanover too. These cobblestone like alleyways and roads and streets and stuff and everything is really... Technically it goes back like centuries, but because of uh, the world wars and stuff being... and Germany being so such a focal point, <laughs> you know sort of an enemy in, in those wars. A lot of things did get destroyed and had to be rebuilt post-World post War II. Places like Hanover, for example, took that opportunity to um, move forward into the future and fix some of the issues that they had been dealing with and really turned it into a positive thing and rebuilt with the future in mind. Whereas you have places like Nuremberg or uh, Bayreuth in, in Bavaria. And I don't know that Bayreuth really got hit that hard. Maybe it did, but um, definitely Nuremberg um, that had to pretty much completely rebuild after the war. And a lot of that architecture is very traditional, very reminiscent of like the Middle Ages, medieval times, Renaissance, because they're very proud of that, and understandably so. The history and the architecture and just the nuances, it's fascinating to me because Germans don't shy away from the mistakes that they made in the past, rather they hope to learn from them and to keep them kind of present or, or visible because you don't ever talk about the things that you did wrong in the past as a culture and as a community, um, it seems like you're more likely to repeat those mistakes in the future because you don't, you're not aware that you ever made them, you're not aware that those lessons um, ever got learned. So the history and the architecture here are just incredible, fascinating, and incredibly multifaceted and, um, and I like that. I like things that have depth and breadth and more you can see them from more than one angle, so. Number seven actually surprised me and that is language. I always thought it was like an ugly language. I always thought that it was like very harsh and very sort of violent sounding and I think that a lot of that association comes out of the only, really the only exposure that I had to German as a language was by watching um, documentaries and historical documentaries and stuff about Hitler and about World War II and stuff. So the, when I heard it, it was always associated with fascism. And I think that that left a really, understandably, a very negative taste in my mouth and a very negative association with the German language. But when I got here uh, and actually was hearing, you know, regular people speaking German, it was really beautiful. I realized that the language itself is actually very beautiful and uh, in ways that I didn't really, I, I didn't give it credit for. It's not ugly and it's not violent. It's just like, it's just different. It's beautiful in its own way and it's also like just cute. I think that, <laughs> I think that German as a language is pretty cute. They just have compound words. The language is made up of so many compound words like um, Ausfahrt and uh, Hanshu. It's like Ausfahrt is like literally out drive, to drive out. It's an exit, but I like it because obviously it has fart in it and I am at heart a 12 year old boy. Hanshu is the word for glove and it's literally hand shoe. It's a shoe for your hand. How cute is that? Come on, that's adorable. Also, like, as a little side note to that though, um, I also really like the level of bilingualism here. I'm very, very thankful for that because it has made my assimilation into the German culture a lot easier and I know that 
There are a lot of problematic reasons for that that I could talk about in another video, but I'll leave that for another video and just say that I'm very thankful for that and that's one of the things that I really like about German culture as well, is the level of bilingualism. Number eight, low cost of living. Coming from Denver, where the cost of living when I was living there before I left in 2016, I was paying 1100, no, just under $1,200 a month for a two bedroom, one bath apartment with my sister. And, uh, and that didn't include any utilities, it didn't include any bills, any Wi-Fi or anything like that. Whereas here, we're gonna be moving into a new apartment that's actually ours, which I'm very excited about uh, here pretty soon. And we are gonna be paying 550 euro a month, which actually includes a lot of things. That includes a lot of utilities and it's a comparable size. So $1,200 a month, not including utilities, versus the 550 euros that we're going to be paying here that does include a lot of utilities. So it's pretty awesome. I'm very thankful for it and I hope that it continues. <laughs> Number nine, the positive attitude toward immigrants. If you watched my culture shock video, which if you haven't, I recommend it, you should. I'll link it below. But if you watched that video, then you know that I've been struggling a lot with culture shock and I've been struggling a lot with finding my place here in Germany. But what has been incredibly helpful is the general positive attitude toward immigrants that exists here, which again is very different from the US right now. Right now in the US we're struggling a lot with reconciling our own immigrant identity with uh, ideas of security and um, nationalism and stuff like that. But here people are so much more willing to be patient and be tolerant of of immigrants and that's incredibly helpful. <laughs> the fact that people are welcoming and tolerant and willing to be patient most of the time, it makes for a smoother transition, I think, ultimately. And it makes me actually want to assimilate into this culture because I'm seeing such good examples of what Germans, of, of who Germans are and, and what I could be as a contributing member of this community. So thank you very much and um, keep doing that. Thank you very much, Germany. Number 10, food quality. And this is coming from somebody who loves food. The food quality here is just outstanding. And again, I think that this comes out of the larger German um, consideration of things that are sustainable and, and you know, feeding the population more sustainably so you have more access to um, organic foods, which is called bio here. Um, but organic foods, farm-raised foods, locally sourced foods, it's very ethical. And so you have, you also have a lot of, a lot more vegan options. Um, veganism is very big here and I think a lot of that has to do with the environmental impact of eating meat which I didn't know about until I came here. But yeah, apparently there is a huge uh, environmental impact that comes from consuming as much meat as a lot of places do, including the US. So okay, I know I said that I was gonna do 10, but I have one, one last bonus one for you, and that is, there's no cat calling here. I don't want this video to go too long, and I know that this is like already an extra thing that I'm talking about, but like, this is really important because in the US, the rape culture and this toxic masculinity and everything is so pervasive and just it's it's everywhere it's so hard to get away from it makes me think that things could and should be better but not just that they should be better not like ideally in a perfect world things would be better in the US no but that they can like i'm ex i'm seeing that here in real life and I'm saying like they can be better. Honestly one of my favorite things about being here is feeling like I can walk down the street and not be objectified. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video please leave a thumbs up and leave a comment telling me your favorite thing about wherever you live. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> I know that I said that this week was gonna be something weird in my last video, and I promise you, I promise you the weird thing is coming, but I just didn't have enough time this week <laughs> 
to do it justice because it's pretty weird. But if you like weird things, please stay tuned, subscribe if you like my content because I put out new videos every week, and otherwise, um, keep being the love that you wish to see in the world, and I will see you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>